Hola amigos! Today I'm going to be giving a walkthrough for beginners on how to record music, particularly on GarageBand. It's free if you already own a Mac, but it's a software that comes on a Mac, and if you don't have it, then it's like $15 or something. Super cheap. And it's very worth it because you can manipulate it enough to make it studio quality. I know people may tell you, oh, GarageBand's crap, you know, you can't make real songs on it, stuff like that. But, um, I mean, all the music I've ever made has been on GarageBand, and it's been pretty decent quality. I'll link you to some of my songs at the bottom to show you that, you know, you can, as long as you have a knowledge of what to do, then you can make it sound good. Right now I'm going to give you a tour of all the basic features of it, and how to drag loops to it just to give you a basic feel for it. And then, um, with, uh, part two, I'll, I'll teach you more about making your own song and writing your own music. So, anyway... Okay, so first you're going to have to open up GarageBand, obviously, I've already opened my own little song here to get you guys started, it's blank, don't worry, I'm not going to get ahead of you too much, load, darn you, okay, first of all, here is where your tracks are going to go, this is where you'll have certain instruments, right now I have a grand piano up, down here is your LCD, which has your time measures, Chord and project. At project, you can see your tempo, which is your BPM, which determines how fast the song is. So 120, that's about moderate speed. If you want to get a faster song, you go up here, slower down here. Pretty simple, right? Okay, anyway, let's see back to 120. Uh, time signature determines how many beats are in each measure. So if you have it in 4 4, that means it'll be like this 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, three, four. You can see up here there's four little dots for each measure. If you want to change it to three-fourths, one, two, three, one, two, three. That's about the easiest explanation I can give, obviously five-four. Anyway, most songs will be in four-four. That's the most uh, common signature in, in most of today's music. A lot of classical music may use three-fourths or, three or whatever. But uh, you, you will most likely be using 4-4. Anyway, next, here's your metronome. You can turn it off. Loops. Okay, to get to your loops, you're going to want to come right down here. This is where your loops are. And here they, they've they laid out which instruments you can choose from for loops. So let's say you want to get a good beat going. You, you'll do all drums. And then I've got some of my own made here. I'm not going to use those. Let's see. Let's say you want to do... Uh, Let's use this one. It's pretty cheesy, but we're just getting the basics down. Okay, so this is a basic 4-4. Four, four. Anyway, let's say that you don't like this entire loop. Like, you only want to play the part right through there. So what are you going to do? You're going to trim it. And by doing that, you can go to the bottom right corner here, and you'll see your mouse turn into this, like the two little arrows with the whatever that line is in the middle. And so what you're going to do is you can shorten it to just fit in this measure. And remember, you're, you're going to want things to stop on the was it the big line here where the measure ends. So it'll be one, two, yeah, one, two, three, four. And you'll want it to end right there, otherwise everything's going to be really off-timed and everything. So that's a good way to work around. When you get more into complex songwriting, you might want to do crazy time signatures where you do like halfway or whatever but right now if you're if you're still new to music you want to do this way okay so you've got this part of the loop you got your favorite part to loop to to make it last longer so you can use it throughout more of the song you go to the top right corner here and you'll notice your mouse turns into this circular loop thing and you're gonna click and drag it and you see it actually it replays the same loop over and over. So now it plays that one part over and over instead of doing that whole thing when you didn't like it. Okay, so obviously you're not going to want just a drum beat. So let's say you want to add a funky synth. You're going to go down here to synths. Find one that you like. Let's say a uh, <laughs> Okay, that's cheesy enough. Okay, and this one's already shortened to this one. You can loop it. Now it's going to be timed.
now everything's timed up perfect because it fits with the measure which is very important you need you need to make sure that it's timed up with the measure right it's gonna start here in here and it doesn't necessarily have to be that long you can have you can have this one this length and this one this length and you just play around with that you can add as many as you want as long as they fit the measure Let's say you want to mute one of the tracks because you're not sure if you want to use it or not. So what you're going to do is you're going to come over here to mute and you're going to click it. And you see how it turns gray. That means you're not going to hear it. So this way you can sample whether or not you want to hear it or not. So you can... And you're like, huh, maybe I want to use it. So you click it again. So then it's easier to determine whether you want it or not. Or if you just don't want to hear that particular part of the song. And then let's say um, you forgot what a particular one sounds like. Instead of having to delete everything, you can go over here to solo. You can click it and it puts this track alone. So you'll just hear it. You can click it again. Plays it again. Let's say this particular synth is too loud. So here's your volume. You can turn it down and then you won't hear it as much. But let's say it's too quiet, then you can put it up here. Then over here you have your panning, which will determine where you will hear the song. So like if you want to hear the particular track only in the left ear, you're going to drag it over here. Let's say let's put this over here. So in one ear you're hearing this one, and the other ear you're hearing this one. But in the middle, you're still hearing the beat. So we'll get a cool little uh, effect going on where in two different ears you're hearing almost different songs and it'll be kinda cool as long as they time up with each other and work together but you can play around with that some too and of course a lot of this you're gonna you know you're not gonna learn everything from this video but it's a good way to learn how to play around with it a little bit so hopefully you can take some of this advice now let's say you wanna make this synth sound different so instead of the cheesy 80's trance you wanna hear it like a piano so you're gonna come down here where the uh, eye is. Hopefully you can see that. That will uh, show you all the programmed instruments that are built in. Let's say you want to make a piano. So you go to pianos and keyboards. Then uh, let's just do grand piano. And the grand piano is normally pretty quiet so you might want to bump up the volume a little bit. And now sounds like a piano. You can do that with any of the 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 green loops here because that means there's software which means they can change these instruments if it's blue like this that means it's a uh, it was audio it was microphone recorded which means you can't change the instrument it's made of but you can uh, uh, mess with the effects which we'll get into in the next video and so uh, you played around with it a little bit your song's done how about we go back to the tempo and say you want to make it a little faster you see, so you come down here bump up the speed a little bit to 180 It's faster. Then let's say that you want to have a particular track fade out a little bit. You're going to click this little arrow here. And then you click the, the dot here where you want the, the fade out to begin. So let's say you, you have it about right here. You click it again. Make another dot. And then you drag it down on the line here. So you'll see it'll eventually fade out. So there you go. And if you want the other way, you can do that too. You know, Same goes either way. And then if you decide that's not a good idea, you can just come to this little square here, click it, and then it won't be doing that anymore. Okay, so uh, you're done with your song now, and you want to see how long it is. You go down here to time, and right here it'll show you. So let's take it to the end of the song here. And it is 12 seconds long. And hopefully none of your songs are going to be that short, but you never know when you're messing around with it. Well, there you have it. Uh, hopefully I explained it well enough. And this is mostly something you need to learn on your own anyway. I was just giving a basic walkthrough because um, 
th this is actually how I learned music is just by messing with the loops and everything. But you need to understand that just using loops is not your music. So you can't just sit here and play with loops and then be like, oh, look at this awesome song I made, because that's not what you did at all. I used to do that. I made that mistake like a long time ago when I was young and stupid. And then I just looked like a total idiot because I wasn't making any of it. I was just dragging it around. So make sure you understand that. If you want to call it your music, you're going to write it yourself, which you're going to figure out more in the next video where, when I explain how to program and write your own music. And uh, eventually I'll teach you how to use extra instruments like guitars and stuff like that. But uh, for right now, just mess with these loops, learn the software a little bit. Um, if there's anything I didn't explain, um, I'm sure... I'm sure you can learn about it and help or whatever, but uh, that's a basic walkthrough, so yeah, see ya.